Hello folks, welcome to my once in a blue moon shoe review. I do not review gear very often, I don't buy gear very often, that's probably why I don't review it very often. And I prefer to have tested something rigorously before recommending it to anybody. So I've set myself an arbitrary rule that I will no longer put out a review of a shoe until I've completed a thousand kilometres in it. If it doesn't last the thousand kilometres, then I guess I'm just not going to review it. Completely arbitrary, but you got to live by rules, I suppose. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about the Freet Feldham Offroad shoe. Freet are a UK-based company. They operate out of Yorkshire and they focus entirely on minimalist shoes. They have a pretty wide range of offerings, ranging from sandals to full-on walking boots, and the Freet Feldham is their... I guess their main trail shoe. The price of the shoe when I bought it, which was a little while ago now, was £85. That price has not changed, so it's nice to see they do kind of keep their prices static, unlike some shoe companies. It is a zero drop shoe. It has a 10.5 millimeter stack height with the insole included in it. If you take the insole out, it is an eight millimeter stack height. Each shoe is approximately 300 grams. Obviously that will vary depending on the shoe size. The shoes are vegan and the upper is made from a recycled bottle mesh that they use on quite a few of their shoes. So it's really nice to see them kind of incorporating recycled materials into the shoes. The shoe has a really, really wide toe box and an asymmetric forefoot shape, which really allows for like natural toe spread, which I personally can't really do without easily in a lot of shoes these days. Really struggle if it doesn't feature quite a wide toe box, so I really really like them for that reason. And now that we've covered the general statistics, um, we'll have a look at the shoes themselves and talk about how well they've lasted. So I do not look after my kit at all. I'm terrible. Don't give me, don't ever lend me things. So I think that just goes to show how well these shoes last. I have not taken care of them at all. Um, they are a mess, as we can as we can see, um, but they are intact, and I'm very impressed with them. The type of running I mostly do, for those of you not familiar with this channel, is fell running, um, and I do use these for fell running. Um, one thing I would say is I wouldn't race in these. Their lug depth is four millimeters but that's generally not good enough for a lot of fell races. Um, so I don't race in them. They don't give me enough traction uh, and they do leave me at a little bit of a disadvantage uh, in terms of racing, but I do a lot of my long training miles in these shoes and they have been pretty good for that. If you are mostly running on trails and don't spend half your life wading through bogs, then these will suit you just fine. So there is actually pretty minimal wear on the sole Again, these have done a thousand kilometers and there's very little wear on the lugs, maybe a little bit in the middle here, but essentially they still look great and I'm gonna keep wearing them. I'm gonna keep wearing them until they fall apart and I'm anticipating they will, it'll take a long time for them to fall apart. Um, the lug depth makes them very nice for, for using on trails and kind of across a slightly less muddy fell terrain. They are pretty good on rock. Um, they, they do push a little bit on the website that they're like extra grippy on rock. <laughs> If you come across certain types of rock that are wet, nothing is going to grip on them, like nothing. Um, so it does annoy me a little bit when companies try and like push that their shoe does something magical. They are pretty good on rock, but there are certain types of rock that they they just no shoe's going to grip on when it's wet. So obviously still be wary uh, and be careful with your footing on um, particular types of rock. If you are mostly making your way through muddy fields, um, then this kind of lug depth is not going to give you enough grip and you are going to slide around like nobody's business. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. I have worn them in really muddy conditions, um, so I can say with confidence they do not grip in mud, but again you're going to have to have pretty massive lugs um, in order to be able to do that. And chances are if you're looking for a minimalist shoe, you're probably not after massive lugs anyway, so you'll probably still be fine with these. Like I said, I wear them in really muddy conditions all the time and I get by perfectly all right. But as I said, the lack of lugs is why I do not race in them. Um, I have different shoes for racing and different shoes for training. In terms of general durability, the sole is now starting to come away from the shoe itself. Um, I'm just gonna super glue that back on, to be honest. It's, I mean, it's barely coming off. Um, there's gaps appearing, but I reckon I can just stick some super glue in there and make them last. 
I don't know, see if we can get another thousand kilometers out of them. Um, <laughs> the good thing about minimalist shoes, I suppose, is you don't really need to worry about um, the support collapsing and then becoming useless after like 500k or whatever happens to some shoes. They, they, you can just use them until they fall apart because they are just basically a shell to protect your foot. Um, so yeah, the sole is coming off. It is now starting to come off and there's sort of a little bit of a gap in the mesh here. Um, but again, I'm just going to super glue that. The mesh itself on both shoes is completely intact. Nothing's ripped through it. And I have walloped my foot on rocks. So I feel like it should have torn, but it's very durable. Still, still completely intact. Absolutely fine. Um, my main gripe is the laces. Because they're a traditional tie lace, um, they will come undone during runs sometimes, which is a bit annoying, sort of unavoidable that you're going to run into that problem with any laces. Um, I have enjoyed some shoes in the past that have found different ways of tying that are not a traditional lace. I do tend to find those a little bit better when you're doing a lot of training in them. Um, they don't come undone that often, but if you're doing quite high mileage, it will feel like they come undone quite often. <laughs> but I don't know, maybe I should just tie my shoelaces better. So as I mentioned, the toe box is really wide. Um, and it's got this asymmetrical shape to it. So it really suits the shape of the human foot. Your toes can splay out really nicely and they're just super comfortable, particularly if you're more of a min minimalist shoe user or you're a barefoot runner, but you need something to just kind of protect your feet on rocky terrain, um, then these are a really good shout because they do let your feet splay out really nice uh, and give you lots of like contact with the ground. They're very flexible uh, and the sole is pretty thin. Uh, even with the insole in, it's not too bad. There's lots of uh, ability to kind of feel what your feet are doing uh, and they are very comfortable if you're used to wearing minimalist shoes. If you're not used to wearing minimalist shoes, then stick to the insole for a little while just to kind of ease into it a little bit more. But yeah, got no complaints. I feel like generally the, uh, the durability of the shoe is fantastic. The shape of the shoe is perfect. Free have really, really nailed the shape. Um, and for general kind of off-road running, they're great. I love them. Um, and just to have a quick look at the other shoe. The same thing is happening with the sole on this one. It's coming away at the back here. So it is entirely on this kind of back heel area that the sole starts to peel away. There is no sign of the sole separating anywhere on the front of either shoe. So it's just that back bit, but I have worn these for now over a thousand kilometers. So the fact that that's the only noticeable wear and like a little bit of grinding down on some of the lugs on the sole, they don't look like they've done a thousand kilometers. I'm just, I'm very happy with them. That's a very, a great use of 85 quid. <laughs> and I won't need to buy a new pair for probably ages more because I can just glue the soles back on. Um, yeah, no complaints whatsoever. If you're on the fence about buying these, don't be on the fence about buying them. Okay, so that was a look at the Freet Feldum. I'm generally very happy with Freet as a company. I have other pairs of their shoes that I use really regularly and I just, yeah, I don't really feel the need to go to another shoe company for most of my needs. As I said, I do use different shoes for racing. Freet haven't yet produced a shoe that I feel is good enough uh, to kind of cope with fell racing, um, which does get pretty quick and hairy at various points and you just need extra, that extra lug grip when you're hurtling down hills and stuff. So for racing purposes, particularly fell racing, I would not recommend these shoes, but for your general training miles and if you're mostly running on trails rather than going completely off piste, then yeah, they're great. I'd recommend them to anybody who wants to use a minimalist shoe that's pretty comfortable and allows their foot to kind of take advantage of its natural shape um, and you're mostly running on trails. They're also quite good if you're if you're kind of stuck in a city but you've got access to like city trails. They're really good for transitioning between, if you've got to run on bits of road between your like bits of trail, they're great for that sort of thing as well. So if you're someone who's kind of stuck in an area where you've kind of got mixed terrain runs, having to run on pavements for some of it, having to run on trails for some of it, then they're great for that sort of thing as well because they are quite comfortable to wear on either trail or road. Incredibly durable, very minimal signs of wear on either shoe. Um, the only reason they look awful is because I never clean them. I'm very happy with them and I would absolutely wholeheartedly recommend them. When these do eventually fall apart, I will probably just buy another pair. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not even gonna bother <laughs> considering another shoe, to be honest. They fill all of the requirements that I need them for um, and I'm just gonna keep using 
them and probably just keep going to free as my like main shoe provider um really really happy with them all right i feel like i might have rambled a little bit there um i might have another shoe review on the horizon at some point um i do use free for my road shoe when i do my kind of yeah road runs uh so when that one eventually gets to a thousand kilometers I'll, I'll pop a review of that up but it could be a little while off yet because i don't do as much road running as i do trail and fell running thank you very much for watching i hope that was useful for you in some way um if you're interested in watching me running up and down hills a lot then you can check out the other videos on my channel um and if you're interested in more gear reviews that don't happen very often but they do happen once in a blue moon other things that happen once in a blue moon on this channel are wild swimming uh, and bouldering and occasionally I'll put out specific uh, race videos. But again, those things are kind of interweaved in between the other videos. So if you're interested, then hit subscribe. Uh, if you're not, then, um, then don't. Thank you very much for watching and I will catch you next time.